Hi, everyone. I'm Jean McDonald, and I help people deal with tough transitions. And one really tough transition in our life is becoming a caregiver for the first time. And so my mission has been to, to provide information and skills on how to take care of yourself as a caregiver while taking care of the person you are caring for. And this series is starting with the communication challenges for caregivers. And we're dealing with communicating with medical and healthcare personnel. We've mentioned that uh, when we have questions, it's good to define specifically what we don't understand. Don't overburden an overburdened system. Just come at them with important, well-defined questions. Find out how best to communicate with your medical team, whether it's through my chart, which works for us, whether it's calling the clinic directly, however they want you to communicate with them, that's the way to go because oftentimes they're understaffed. And if you do it the way they prefer, you will get your answers and keep that communication channel going effectively. A great tool for older people, but you know, hey, start young on this, is bring a friend or family member with you to the appointment. Because that friend or family no member, they see on a daily basis what you're going through. And sometimes when you're actually in the appointment, you might forget a symptom. You might forget a question that you had. And so having that friend or family member there, oftentimes they'll remember the question for you. Or They'll ask a really good question of their own. And so the first, fourth um, in this series of communicating with healthcare professionals has to do with insurance, health insurance. Now, I'm in an area where most of us, I just became on Medicare and many others, and Medicare can be very confusing. And so this, the tip for today is to find agencies that can help you through this because I've been to DSHS, the Department of Social Health and Social Services, DHSH, whatever. I get all those acronyms wrong, which that's the other thing is you get hit with these, these um, abbreviations and acronyms that don't make sense. So Anyway, find agencies or advocates that can help you through this system. And what I found with, uh, with my brother's situation is that his Social Security is not covering his expenses. So I went down to DSHS and asked them what I can do. And I'm approved as his representative and we filled out paperwork and we got him some food assistance, which really helped. And at the time they were giving a little more assistance because of COVID. But then when they cut that assistance back, he was back to a situation where he was losing money every month and he doesn't have that big of a reserve of money. So the second step was to look at he pays $164 a month in Medicare Part B. And I had heard that there was some coverage for this if people, if the patient qualifies. And so I went down to the DSHS and they said, oh, go to the website and fill out that form. Well, I went to the website, could not get into the form. It kept looping me around. I would log in. I would log in a different way. Whatever I did, I could not get to that form. Well, fortunately, we have an advocate system here in Washington State called SHIBA. And I believe they're in other states also. I know there's one in Oregon. But it's Statewide Health Insurance Benefits Advisors. And we have a senior center here in Port Angeles in which the Sheba volunteers show up twice a month. And so I sat there and waited. I let other people go ahead of me and um, not sure what how they would help me. 
but because I didn't want to take away from someone who was more needy than my brother. But when they finally got to me, we filled out the form in what, 10, 15 minutes for him. And he got his benefit in four days. I mean, I was struggling even to get the form yet through the Shiva, Shiva advisors, we took care of this so quickly and got him his benefit right away. And what more can you ask? But you, it's hard sometimes to find these agencies. Another friend of mine is um, in a situation with her, her husband has dementia and it's like, okay, well, let's get some information for, for her. So I'm looking into the Sheba group in her area, which is in the Tacoma area, because we're, we're an older community that I think we tend to get more advocates and people helping us, but hopefully it's out there for, for others in the state and in the country, because finding these agencies, another agency also kind of associated with the state and DSHS is it's called the Olympic Area Agency for the Aging, and they call it uh, O3A.org. And uh, these area agencies for the aging also have the people that can advise you where to go, what resource to call, because sometimes you just get hit with, with a page of phone numbers and you don't quite know where to start. Well, if you're struggling, sometimes these area agency for the aging will provide help. So find some of these agencies in your area. And what I was told by one group, uh, well, it was actually a niece and her, her aunt, and she was taking care of her older aunt and trying to get some of these benefits in place for her aunt. And I was sitting waiting for the Sheba volunteers a few months ago. And and this niece said, remember, be very patient with the system. They are short staff. These are volunteers. It's not an easy process, but you can get results. But be patient with yourself. Be patient with them. But be persistent. Don't, don't depend on them following through. You have to do the follow-up yourself. But she says, They've made progress and, and things are falling into place. And so far, I've been very happy to see what's fallen in place already for my brother. So anyway, that's all I have today. And that's all I'm going to cover on communicating with medical and healthcare professionals. Our next set of talks will be on dealing with communication with family and friends in a caregiver situation. Ooh, hot topic. Anyway, thank you so much for listening. Bye for now.